In this video, I'm going to teach you how to tame bouncing and bobbing, wind, and turbulence in the Kamov, and get it to a point where you want it to go. Now, damage from combat and collisions can affect your stability. Getting your autopilot channels knocked out will remove your autopilot hold and dampening effects. Having one or more of your rotor blades cut short will start rocking you around a lot, and might occasionally give you fuel warnings as the gas sloshes around in the tank. Losing parts of your tail can impede rudder, start yawing you, and might change your center of gravity as well. From our limited understanding, the tail is actually glued on, and in terms of noteworthy systems, only contains your red altimeter, which you might need for altitude hold and hover mode, and maybe your rear laser warning receiver. You won't be losing fuel or suffer gear failure from this damage. So there's no warnings for rotor damage, and depending on how much of a tail lost, you might only see a warning for that, for the right altimeter and how your controls respond. Now, if your K50 starts misbehaving when you're undamaged and you didn't forget anything obvious at startup, like, like your eye new switch or having doubled key binds for your controls or a faulty hotel sensor, evaluate the following circumstances in order of urgency. If you've got the shakes and some uncontrollable spin, it could be entered into a vortex ring state, typically under 50 kph in any direction and descending more than 5 meters a second. Drop collective then bank or pitch to gain speed in a direction and once the shaking subsides and you regain control gently raise power and get out of your dive if you're only starting to get vrs shakes you may be able to power out of it though if you guess wrong you're only making it worse next check you haven't accidentally switched off your autopilot channels outside you pressing buttons manually or emergency autopilot disengage on your cyclic stick engaging hover mode below four meters or before your doppler is ready will also kick off your autopilot channels. Next, check if you left your auto turn or route mode on, which is trying to get you pointing somewhere else. Golden rule is just remember, switch off autopilot modes after you use them. If you use a special option for rudder trim, check you haven't left a strong trim set for that rudder. If you're not using the rudder trim special setting, make sure that when you release trim, you're stable in new flight path, and your rudder is either neutral or within the 20% authority of the autopilot channels so that your autopilot can keep that up to 20% rudder input that you just had to maintain that heading. Otherwise, your heading will fail and you'll turn. If it's none of the above, then it's likely airspeed. The black shock tends to weather vane in the direction of oncoming air, so if you're hovering, strong wind can make it turn and face the incoming wind. If you're traveling at speed, then the air might be rushing more strongly from that direction. So a side slip or reverse approaching 100 kph, your black shock will naturally turn in the direction you're traveling. If you're going forward fast enough, then this will help you feel more control of your direction than slower speeds or hovering in a strong wind. Your coaxial rotors are balanced and in the hover, the downwash rotor has slightly more pitch and the torque forces are then equalized. Air rushing through your top rotor as you pitch down in fast forward flight makes you bank right, which you need to counter with left cyclic stick. If your autopilot channels were off, you'd also need to use a bit of right rudder, which is you're normally compensated for by the autopilots. Because of your left bank input, your slip ball will also be slightly to the right. Fast flight does reduce your maneuverability, especially if you're trying to rudder over without banking into the turn as well. If you descend rapidly at a level pitch angle, your shark will yaw slightly to the right. If you perform essentially a cobra maneuver, pulling up maybe 30 degrees from 250 kph to perform an emergency stop, but with collective down so that you don't gain altitude, then you'll experience severe right bank and yaw. Just pulling 30 degrees up and climbing or diving nose down keeps the rotors levelish and won't induce any turn in itself. With autopilot channels off, you'll also experience a uh, right yaw in harbor and would need left rudder to counter it. Your K50 handles wind purely by feeling where it's getting pushed off course and tries to compensate. The stronger the wind, the more the black shark will turn into the oncoming wind instead of where you wanted it to go. In extreme wind, it may even keep spinning instead of just facing the wind. The higher the turbulence, the more you'll bob and shake as you try to navigate and turn on tow it. Now the briefing window, or packet if you have one, will usually show weather conditions. Typically these are above sea level, so if you're starting or operating at high altitude like Nevada, look at those higher bands. The wind at your starting altitude where you spawned, whether on the ground or mid-air, is shown in your PVI 800 if you press the wind destination speed button. It shows the direction the wind is blowing from, and the speed meters per second, which is roughly half the number of knots. In the Abris Nav page, Going to the flight plan will show the kilometers per hour the wind is traveling to for each leg of your route. 
You can change FPL settings by going to the options and units and changing speed and altitude if you want. Yeah, at the time of making this video though, there's a bug in the open beta where the wind in the flight plan at 33 and 1,600 feet are doubled in the Abrus. Although the 6,600 feet and 26,000 feet might be correct. I have reported this bug, so hopefully it's not there for long. Neither the Abrus flight plan nor the PLA 800's wind button is automatically updated in flight. Nor does it affect how your autopilot channels work. If you're dealing with dynamic weather or flying at an altitude that you didn't have recorded on before, you can manually capture new information of the PVA 800 or Abris, but it's for informational purposes to you only. Here you can see some combinations of wind speed and turbulence, primarily at 33 foot harbor. They're not time tests, just showing you some of the wind conditions and how they affect flight. These wind speeds are extreme, but uh, even 3 meters a second you will feel in your shock. This one is from due south, so slightly left of the initial heading I try to keep on the smokestack. Unless you have a perfect harbor, probably without hover mode, heavy wind will likely either compromise your ability to turn on target or cause you to side slip. So take this into account if you're near terrain that you can bash into while you're focusing on targets heads down. Next, I try to use auto turn to get on target or from the right, so the wind will be from the left side. Auto turn only really controls a little bit of rudder input, so I activate root mode as well. Now, root mode's heading is overridden by auto turn. However, root mode also tries leveling out your aircraft against moderate wind and badly trimmed bank, often giving auto turn just a little bit of extra oomph it needs to get close to the target. Note, root mode will switch off hover mode, pitches you down a little so you'll get a bit of forward momentum, and if you had intentionally programmed side slip, it will remove that as well. Next, I try to manually retrim in a new hover at the new angle which the wind would have upset and then re-engaging hover mode. Another possibility to turn and a more accurate way to turn on target instead of auto turn or root mode is by turning heading hold off, ruddering just past the target and then re-enabling heading hold which will set a new heading for your nose to point at. You could do something similar with ruddering just past the target then tapping hover mode off and then immediately back on again with a slight buck. Now at 40 knots it's go time. Auto turn can't win here, and root mode assisting struggles to do a lot of nothing, even with zero turbulence. Even setting a new auto hover, the shark just weather vanes straight back into the oncoming wind. You will need manual rudder, either held or set with precision if you're using special rudder trim. Increasing collective power does help maneuverability often, and lets auto turn and root mode just have that bit of extra control to get you on target, at the cost of gaining altitude probably but it's 40 knots, not even that's going to work against the wind. Here you can see how wind changes between the ground speed on the HUD, where it shows I'm practically hovering, and my indicated airspeed, which is essentially what my rotors are feeling. Here my indicated airspeed is 60 kph, even though my ground speed is only 2. For rotor intersections, it's your indicated airspeed. In the front panel, you have to be mindful of when you start nearing or exceeding 250 kph, not the HUD. In this frequent wind, I'm almost hitting 450, with the wind from the rear in a dive. But my rotors aren't reaching their limit for intersections yet. Don't expect to use this kind of speed often though, you really don't want to be flying in wind this strong. And while it's within the Black Shark's tolerable limits for takeoff, it's extreme and kind of dangerous. If I were to turn around now, I'd barely hit 140 before I get either velocity warnings or an overheating engine. Flying against wind requires a lot of power, so consider lighter payloads. Same with if you were flying in a hot mission, and especially at high altitudes like 40 degrees in the middle of Nevada, loss of lift will mean you can't hover with all four pylons and full fuel load. Now if you want to fly without flying in a breeze, and laziness prevails, just look at your direction with a helmet mounted sight, engage the schwall layer, put on auto turn and then root mode, so it gives auto turn that bit of extra authority to counter your bank and counter the breeze. If the schwall is bust, in moderate wind, I could also, with the PVI 800 not lit up, bank and rudder over my destination, then flick on route mode, which should then do some leveling and kind of balancing in mild wind without me needing to trim as well. Bad for practice, good for laziness. But if you truly want accurate facing and you can't navigate so that you're facing the target or destination exactly into the oncoming wind, then manual rudder is the only way. Either hold rudder or use the rudder trim setting. You might also need a bank and pitch into the direction of the wind to stop you from getting pushed away by it, while the rudder is going in the direction of the wind to prevent you facing and turning into it. 
in heavier wind, you may find that hover mode bobs and bucks too much and that manually hovering without it is just easier. Now I'm sure there's a lot of flight dynamics that I haven't found. It's a complex coaxial rotor system and there are funny angles wind can hit you at. But because you can't feel the seat, just be careful to watch your helo and adapt to whatever it's doing. Now some of these concepts bleed off the first video on autopilot channels and modes, but I can't actually think of any other resources to refer to for this topic other than the Black Shock manual on various takeoff and landing procedures in wind. Hopefully this gets you on the right track. This is Volk, and next I'll be taking you through a typical mission where I ignore all of my advice from these first three videos and talk through my thought process on how and why I engage the various modes and strategies. Cheers.